Good evening, everyone, and very warm welcome to another Meaningful Monday. So to all the new people, we've got quite a few of you tonight here, just want to say thank you for joining, thank you for taking the time, and then for the regulars who are here, welcome back. So for those of you who don't know what Meaningful Monday is all about, it's just a free webinar on the first Monday of every month. And the purpose is really just to raise awareness and help us understand more and more that we do create our own reality. We are certainly not victims. And we are actually powerful creators. And tonight is a very interesting topic, which might be a little bit um, different compared to what I normally do. But I really felt it was necessary to discuss this topic because this has been one of the biggest game changers in my personal life. And I thought I need to just share this. I'm just going to press mute here for a second. Um, as I said, you, you can mute yourselves. And then I just want to let you all know that I'm actually doing Meaningful Monday for the very first time outside of my home town or my home even. I'm in Brisbane um, with Lisa and Fabian who are there on Zoom just opposite me. They're sitting in front of me. So thank you very much for having me in your house. they lovely, not just kind and generous, wonderful people, but they're also keen enthusiasts for personal growth, which is really nice company to keep. All right, so for tonight, the topic is tithing and um, it's not the word that I would have used a couple of years ago. I just thought if I did anything good with some of the money I had, I was just giving a donation to some cause. But tithing is tithing. And I want to talk about this tonight because I really feel this is one of the most important principles of prosperity. And that might sound a bit strange, but I'm talking about money here and I'm talking about wealth creation. And tithing is absolutely directly linked. So. As I go through it, um, I hope that I do not only just add information to all of you, but I actually help you change behavior and start to take action in an area that might be different for you and um, see the immeasurable blessings that come from this particular discipline practice and why it is so powerful. So I just love this quote by Anne Frank, no one has ever become poor by giving. And it may be obvious, maybe you've heard this before, but just let that sink in because the truth is that it's absolutely true. And once you not only know this, but believe this for yourself, it might alleviate this underlying hesitancy or fear that people have when it comes to a disciplined act of tithing and it's a discipline. So I'm going to use the word discipline probably several times because if there's one way if someone had to ask me, Janine, I really lack self-discipline. What do you recommend I do? I would say tithing any day of the week. I wouldn't say go to the gym and wake up at five every morning or do 10 sit-ups a day or affirmations or whatever. I would say tithing because tithing is the one area that will help you develop self-discipline head and shoulders above anything else. It's such a conscious act to do and it takes every part of us to be engaged to actually do this. And I'll just share a bit more as we go along to make it easier to understand why I think this is so important. So first of all, what is tithing? So as the word is tithe, it comes from the word 10th. It means a 10th. So a tithe by definition is the measurement of one tenth of all the money that you make or the time that you have or the talents that you've got could be any one of them. And it's giving that one tenth away so many people think that tithing is giving back it's not giving back it's giving first so there's a big difference in the law of economics um it is about you 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 give first to receive if you think about your work you actually got to work first for a whole month or whatever it is and then you get paid so you've got to give first and then you get paid if you think about going to gym and exercising, you'd have to go to gym first and work and work and work and work out all the time. And then you get the body. It could be weight reduction. You've got to eat correctly or do whatever the thing you're doing first. And then you get it. You've got to study first. If you get a degree, you first got to go to university, study for years, do exams. And at the end you get something. So, some people i'm surprised they find it any different when it comes to money and if that does sound strange it's exactly the same principle it's the principle of sowing and reaping so as you sow so shall you reap and 
Tithing is that principle. But the point of tithing is not just about giving and receiving. That's not the point of tithing. It has another purpose in your life. So why should you tithe? Because it's going to ask a lot. If you're not a person who's practicing this. So actually, I'd actually like to do a bit of a poll here. Jump onto your chat box. You've got a button at the top of your little menu there. It says chat. Just type in the chat box um, an N if you're not an absolute, I give 10% of every dollar I earn tither. And it's okay to say no because I wasn't one before I understood this myself. So just put an N if you're not, if you don't give 10% of every single do dollar you earn. Just t type in a ten, an, an N. Okay, I've got mostly N's here. Okay, the whole box is in. Um, all right, great. That's why you're here tonight. So this is a great opportunity. I was exactly the same. I used to give, you know, in my life as I grew up, my parents, you know, here and there, give to charity here, give to charity there. It was just something I felt good about doing when I felt when I was doing it. But it wasn't something I was regularly doing until um, I met a man named Paul Martinelli and I did a, a, a course with him several years ago, about 2013. And he brought up this topic of tithing and basically it's about giving a tenth of every dollar you earn away. Now, why it says tithing changes and grows you is because if you to think about what you earn, so just bring that money figure to your head right now. How much do you earn in a month? And you take five, 5%, not 10, 5% of that. You think, yep, I could probably give that away. 10% is just a little bit more. It's just a little bit of a stretch. And if you're making $100,000 a year, that's $10,000 a year. If you're making a million, that's $100,000 a year. And if you're making more than that, you can see that if a person did make a million dollars a year and you felt like giving away 10,000, that's easy. You could stomach that. You could do 50,000 even, but 100,000. So that 10th is just that little bit of a stretch and it's meant to be that stretch because it says there to change you. It's meant to change you and change you for what? Well, for developing faith. Now that might sound a bit left field. It's to change you and it's to grow you because you've got to get right out of your comfort zone with a part of you believing that you're going to be fine financially, even though you give such an amount away, you also need to do it with a spirit of not that um, I've got to really be forced to do this and something that I'm struggling to get my head around. We have this massive resistance and everyone does. So it does build trust. It builds trust in the source of all supply, because if you have to give a tenth away and let's say it is a little bit more than, than you think you can budget for, it means that you have to that you are actually trusting that the that the supply that brought you that money in the first place is going to continuously supply to you in the future. And with that confidence and that faith is the reason that you can give this money away. So just on those first two points alone, you can see if you did actually practice this, it's forcing you to think in a different way. And it's forcing you to get rid of a mentality of lack because you have this faith that money will come back to you because as you give, so shall you receive. So you're actually practicing a principle of sowing and reaping. It also gives you a closer connection to whatever name you want to call it, source, universal source energy, the universe, God, whatever the term is. For the presentation, I may use God, that's God, that's what I, um, the word I use, or that's my faith. So it gives me a closer connection to God. Why? Because if I do tithe, which, as I said, why made you put the N in the chat box? I also wasn't a person who did it regularly. But when I did that um, mastermind years ago with my mentor, and he said, on every single dollar you earn, and I thought, really? That's going to take a lot of effort for me. Okay, what is the end, please? The end, please, is um, for no, you do not give away um, a discipline 10%, someone asked the question, of every dollar you earn. So there's a way to tithe, and, and I'm going to explain to you how you get your mindset into a different place before you tithe and when you tithe. And as you do this with practice, you do develop a closer connection to source or the universe or God, which is really a connection to the source of all supply. 
Every single thing you have in your life comes from this one source. Everything. From all the money you have, you can look around your home, to every piece of furniture, to the house that you're living in, to the clothes on your back, to the kidneys in your body, the lungs that work, the breath that you take, including every breath you take, everything comes from one source. So when we tithe and we're changing and we're growing and we're building trust and faith that we will continuously be supplied by this source of all supply, we build our faith in the most unusual yet powerful way. And then tithing also helps you develop a mindset of abundance. And that's the reason why I say it's such a discipline. Most people have a default mentality of lack, unless they do personal growth and they do a lot of work on themselves and be very self-aware of their mindset. We have a fear of poverty. We have a fear of not having enough. We are always seeking to acquire more. We're always seeking to do more, be more, have more. And it depends on how your mind works that one through. So is it that I want to have more? because you've got this kind of awareness that you don't have enough because that is a mentality of lack. And with that, you don't really create as much as your potential allows you. But if you have what tithing that develops an abundance state of mind, it means that you are saying my cup runneth over here. I am so abundant that I'm blessed enough to give away a 10th of what I have knowing that I'm connected to the source, connected to the source of all supply and will always be provided for. The word I used is carried. We are literally carried through this life and given everything that we need. So when we think that our cup runneth over, we give then with gratitude, thinking that, so the best example I can give is this. I heard a story of Wayne Dyer many, many years ago in one of his audio books, where he said on one of his birthdays, he took, I think it was, I don't know, $5,000 or something. And he went out in the streets of New York and he gave the money away to homeless people. And he said, when he finished doing that, he got back to his hotel room and he just cried like a baby from being so overwhelmed with gratitude, realizing how fortunate and blessed he is when he gave to so many people, realizing how they live, how little they have and the circumstances in which they live. So I myself several years ago on Christmas day went into the streets of Sydney and I did the very same thing. And I've also given away um, the book Think and Grow Rich to people in the street. And even if you did it to just one person and I encourage you to try this on Christmas or your birthday or some day, any day, and do it to several people. So if you even take a hundred dollar note, divide it into 10 and give 10 people $10. And you'll see by the end of that particular um, example, how humbled and emotionally grateful you feel with how blessed you are and how blessed your life is. And that gives you this overwhelming feeling of being abundant, that you are abundant. Um, yeah, okay, someone just answered the question. So when you do give away, you are practicing that you do have more than enough and your cup runneth over. So it's really a spiritual practice. It's not a financial practice, um, just to make that clear. So when you sow generosity, you reap generosity. Okay, so there's this law, there are many universal laws. So the law of reciprocity says the more you give of yourself without expecting anything in return the more that will come back to you and that's really the important thing about tithing we are intentionally giving where we don't get anything directly back in return from where we're giving it to so tithing can be to whatever cause um, appeals to you there's no right or wrong here then it says that's because we live in an ocean of motion nothing stands still there's a constant flow of energy in our universe and this energy flows to and through us. Money is energy. And money, it's called a currency because it flows like a current, like a river, a current flow. That's why it's called a currency. 
And if we become a river, in other words, the money flows through us, to us and through us, and we put it out into the world and do good in this world and bless others with this flow, the more you give, the more you receive. And if a person doesn't actually do anything, um, I would say, like purposeful in blessing others, even in a small way, it's only 10% really, think about it, then what really is the good of having a lot of money just for ourselves? Because the truth is we don't really come into this world with anything and we don't leave with anything. So I always say the money is not mine. I manage it. And it's true, the money isn't mine. I was born with nothing. And one day when I leave this planet, I'm going to leave with nothing. And all this money that's in our lives is really just, it's just here. So I'm more of a steward of the money or a manager of the money or an agent of the money. If everything comes from one universal source, then it's really God's money. And I am the manager of the money. And I get to do something with this money that does good in this world. And for that, I get to keep 90%. So when you turn the whole tithing principle upside down and you say it that way, the money is not mine. I manage it by literally being the physical hands of God in this world or whatever term you want to use. And for that, I get to keep 90%. That's a pretty good deal. And that changes the feeling inside from one of, oh, I've got to give this money almost like, do I have to? To one of absolute gratitude and the feeling that your cup runneth over. And it really starts to open up a flow in your life that's one, highly intentional, two, takes an enormous amount of discipline to practice this and an enormous amount, I'm going to say it, of courage and faith because you don't really know what tomorrow is going to hold, but you're giving the money away with faith that you're going to be fine. And all I can say is if you do practice this, I just want to put in the chat box, who's practiced tithing and realized that you have been immensely blessed through this practice, like beyond words. I speak for myself and I, I can say that. Um, and the more it became a proper um, discipline, the more it has blessed my life. So someone said, yes, if you want to share anything, Desiree, you're welcome to unmute your mic and just share, like how has it been in your life and what kind of effect has it had? Now, just on this um, slide, yeah, connected to the source of all supply, just to say like that little thing right in the middle is the universe. So everything comes from one source, everything, your body, nature, everything comes from one source. So I'm just letting people who are still joining into the webinar. So what tithing does, it creates this awareness of our connection to the source of all supply. So the way I like to think about it is, I create my personal wealth from an infinite source. This source really is infinite and it's blessing me with what I've received here. And I am going to do something significant whilst I'm here on this planet with this that I've been blessed with by blessing others. And then the law of reciprocity and the law of cause and effect or the law of circulation or the law of giving and receiving, whichever law you want to call it, is in play. And the more that we practice this with intention, one, it makes us feel better. It builds up your own self-esteem. And it really does have a, a huge um, compounding effect of blessing you, blessing you as you bless others. So Anna says, I take 10% of my regular client's treatments away to say thank you, but I guess I pay my own GST but it makes me feel happy to say, um, to say something that way. Yes, lovely, fantastic. Okay, so don't ask how. So when we say don't ask how, um, we're saying don't ask how you're gonna get by, how you're gonna have enough money, how you're going to, um, are you gonna be financially okay if you give the money away? Where, where will my next resource come from? When will the next breakthrough come? Uh, when will I, how will I ever have enough? Or the question, when should I give? Should I wait? Should I earn more money before I start doing this? Um, do I give my gross income or my net income? All these kind of questions start to bubble up when a person really wants to be intentional about taking the step and tithing. 
Um, this is a quote of Paolo Coelho. When you want something, all the universe conspires in helping you to achieve it. So the universe is always conspiring in your favor. And the more you give to life, the more life gives to you. And tithing is fantastic practice that can change a person in so many ways. Um, and it's a spiritual practice. So if anyone's got an intention to grow spiritually, to have a stronger connection with your creator, in my view, nothing is as powerful as tithing because you have to demonstrate your faith through action. You can't just say it, you have to actually do it. So many people say, I don't have enough money to give. Well, if you don't have enough money to give, if you think that you don't have enough, well, if you don't give when you think when you don't have it, you're never going to be able to give it even when you do have it. And I'm not saying to a person, if you really are stretched financially, okay, go and give money away that you don't have if you can't pay your rent or something like that. But then give time away. And if you feel, even if, you, if you're a very busy person, you think you don't have enough time, why don't you test this theory of tithing with your time and decide that you're going to give, like, let's say everyone's asking for a piece of you, decide that you're going to change your mind and say, okay, I'm going to give people who want time from me that I don't really want to give to. I'm going to generously, asking nothing in return and expecting nothing in return, I'm going to just give them my time. I can tell you, if you did that, you would suddenly find that you have more time than you've ever had. The principle of receiving when you give or sowing and reaping is in the same principle, whether it's your time, whether it's your talent, whatever it may be. Now here's a quick video of John Maxwell. For any of you who don't know who John Maxwell is, he's the world's number one leadership author and speaker. I'm just going to put the sound through here just in case you don't hear anything. Um, and John Maxwell is the person who helped me reframe the principle of tithing to that concept of the money's not mine and it really isn't mine and it really isn't yours either. You may think it is, but if you passed on tomorrow, you're not taking anything with you. So really, is it really ours? Do we really own anything? No. So the money's not ours. We are here on this earth as a steward, as an agent, as a, manager of that money and what are we meant to do something to bless others and alleviate suffering of other people or make their lives a little bit easier let them breathe slightly easier than what they were before knowing that we are so blessed and have more than enough that we can improve the lives for others and for that we get to keep 90 percent so here's the video have a listen Hi, John Maxwell here today. Welcome to Minute with Maxwell. The word today is tithing. Now, that's a biblical Old Testament word. Let me define what it means. Basically, it means to give 10% of your income to uh, charity or to good work. And uh, it's, a, it's an incredible principle because it really kind of helps us get rid of our greed and our selfishness. And pretty much the biblical model for this and, and teaching is that that if you uh, will take 10% of your income and, and, and give it to good causes, that uh, you'll have a greater return with 90% than you would if you kept it all. Now, I know we don't understand that principle. It's kind of a God principle, but, but I would just encourage you, whether you're a person of faith or not, to begin tithing and uh, live a life that basically says... Um, I need to add value to people and help them. And there are times when I need to be my brother's keeper or my sister's keeper. Uh, it's a principle that I've lived. I, I grew up with it. So as a child, I mean, I tithe my allowance. And today I, I continue that practice. And I, I can say it's one of the most liberating practices and principles and one of the most success principles of my life. And um, uh, here's what works. God will only give to you what he knows will flow through you. So don't be a res reservoir, be a river. My name's John. Thanks for being with me today on Minute with Maxwell.
Oops. So um, the one thing that I did like about what John Maxwell said there was it gets rid of greed. And it also gets rid of a mentality of lack. The more you tithe, you just feel, especially when it's a discipline. So I'm going to say it's a discipline, meaning it's not 10% of the money you have or receive this month. And then it's three or four months time. It's going to be another 10% of that or in between here and there. It's 10% of every single dollar you earn. Now, sometimes it can be quite a big amount of money. So some of you may know I help people with investment property. I sold an investment property recently. Um, it made a very good profit. So just imagine you sell a property and you have, I don't know, 300,000, 400,000 profit. And to give away 10% is a lot of money now. You're talking about $30,000, $40,000. Um, even though you still got to pay capital gains tax. So tax is nothing to do with tithing. Tax is just something else that's just there. It's actually giving it to a cause that you feel strongly about. And it's any cause that means something to you. For me, I often you, um, help animal charities out because I just feel that animals are, um, they don't have a voice of their own and they don't make the rules on this planet. Human beings do, and many of them are exploited quite badly. So animals is my thing. It doesn't have to be yours. It can be anything. It can be whatever it is for you. Um, but the point is, tithing is that discipline of giving 10% of every dollar you earn. And if you had to think about yourself in that situation, because I know this has been my own experience, especially when you make a lot of money or you get a bonus, or let's say you sold a property and you make a lot of money profit, to give a big chunk like that away takes a huge amount of self-discipline. Huge. I don't know any other practice that takes that amount of discipline. But it changes you. And it changes you so much. The only way to explain it is you have to experience it to understand it. And the blessings that flow from it, and I'm not saying this is a, a give-to-get scheme because it's not that, and I don't want it to sound like that. But the blessings in return are absolutely profound. And we are so blessed. And as John Maxwell said, you will never be given more than you can. What did he say? I don't exactly remember the words. But the more that you trusted to allow the flow to, to, of blessings or money or talents or time, whatever it is, the more you allow that to flow through you, the more you are entrusted with more. So if you become a vessel or a, a river or a conduit of giving, the more you are blessed with. And you know, this even um, relates to, if anyone here is um, in any kind of work, let's just say, like I'm in the person development space. I know that, you know, there was a time years ago where I was afraid to share everything that I knew or everything that I learned for free because there's a price attached to it and, you know, I had to pay for it. And then John Maxwell said, no, give it. The more you give, the more knowledge you'll receive. The more you will be blessed with. The more ideas you give away, the more ideas will be blessed with. It re relates to absolutely anything. So if you're a person who holds your ideas very close to your chest and thinks, if I give my ideas away, people are going to beat me to something. I don't know what that something is. It's the very opposite. Just, just give. Give with your whole heart. Give with a feeling of how you're blessed to have received. And you will just be so blessed in return. So here are the seven principles of tithing. The first one is start where you are. So do what you can with what you got from where you are. When I say start from where you are, the most important word there is start. It's not to say oh, I'm going to wait for the conditions and circumstances in my life to first change. I'm going to wait till I'm first earning a little bit more. No, start right now. Make it a principle in your life. If you want to grow and change and grow spiritually and develop faith, so much faith. I don't know how to teach someone faith. I've got no idea. I don't know how I learn faith. But for me, I developed my faith enormously through tithing because you've got to take a step without knowing what the future is going to hold. But as you practice this, you become so connected and aware. And the feeling of that gratitude in the time that you're giving, saying the money's not mine, I manage it and for that I get to keep 90%, you feel abundant and you feel blessed. And when you've done it, you feel amazing and you hold that gratitude inside. So now you are bit by bit with practice 
developing more and more of an abundance mindset and you are really being a blessing on this planet. So isn't that a great legacy um, for anyone to leave knowing that you did help suffering or alleviate some suffering in this world or helped people or helped animals or helped nature or helped whatever it may be, any cause you want. There's no particular, um, no one can tell you what to, what to give it to. And then give 10% because that's what tithe means. And it is 10 because it is that bit more, it is a stretch and it's required to be outside of your comfort zone. If 5% is kind of in the comfort zone, it's meant to be outside the comfort zone to change us, to grow us and to help us develop that faith. The other one is give immediately. As you get it, give it. Because the longer we wait, there's something called the law of diminishing intent. We wait, we'll think, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, it becomes less and less and less. And then you may start to negotiate with yourself and with the terms on how you're giving and you know, you're going to have this rainy day syndrome and um, fear might creep in or doubt. Don't. As you receive it, be so grateful. Give thanks for receiving it. And thanks that you've been given this blessing to bless others. And for that, you get to keep 90%. And that changes you inside. It changes your heart. And then give to a cause that's close to your heart that aligns with your values and that means something to you. It can also be an individual. So I'll give you this quick story. Um, Paul Martinelli shared it with um, me and I've had a similar experience, but I'd rather tell his story. He went into a department store, something like a David Jones, and he just um, had been paid $30,000 for some consulting work he did for company. So he had $3,000 was his tithe to give away. And we, um, he taught me that you do it with intuition. So you don't plan this out too much with your logical mind because logic is the opposite of intuition. You just close your eyes when you've received this and you just say, you know, may I be guided to where this would be best served? Where could I add the most value and create a great blessing? May I be guided? That's all. Just a thought in your head. And he was standing there in this department store, which had like David Jones, not not cheap stuff. It was, you know, a nice up marketplace. And he, something in his mind just said to him, that lady serving behind the counter, give it to her. And he, and he questioned that slightly and he thought, that's a bit strange. She's very well dressed, very well groomed. She's working in this um, very expensive department store, but he just trusted his intuition. So he paid for his goods and then he asked if he could speak to her privately, not to make a scene. And he called her aside and he said, look, I just want you to know that if you prayed for a blessing, here it is. And this money is not from me, so please do not thank me. Um, if you have prayed for a blessing in your life, I have been asked to give this to you and just take it. And this woman just burst into tears and she said, um, I've been holding it together. I've told nobody, but I've had some major problems in my life. I don't know how I'm going to paint. I don't know how I was going to pay, pay the rent this week. Um, I've been extremely stressed out and this has just come at the absolute perfect time and she just cried. And in that moment, this just proved to Paul that we do need to tithe with intuition. You will be guided to where it's most needed. It doesn't always have to be an organization like a charity or your church or whatever it may be. It could be to an individual. And in my own life, using the same principle, I have often done that through also intuitive guidance to someone I thought never needed the money and just did it anyway. And I had a similar experience where something had happened and they keep it to themselves and they were really in a difficult situation and the person really, really needed that money. So when you have an experience like that, it will change you and you will realize how blessed you are. You've kept 90% of that money and that that you've given that person has been like the hugest blessing in their life. So just think about how much abundance you are worth or you are carrying or having or um, experiencing or receiving. So it does definitely change the way that we um, feel inside and the gratitude that we carry with us. Also give quietly and privately. Um, you know, even Jose Silver talks about this in the silver method. Just whatever you do, you know, keep it private, keep it to yourself. This is not a, a moment to, um, like publicize it and try to make it something about you because it's not really about you. 
Um, tithing is really about your connection to the source of all supply. It's developing a relationship with that source of all supply or with God, if it's God for you. It's about building the faith, your spiritual development. That's what it's about. It's not about anything to do with ego or how great you are, how much you give. And the more you keep it quiet, the more you also tend to strengthen that relationship with the source of all supply because it becomes just something between you and that source. So that's another one of the principles in tithing. And then definitely give with a full open heart. Give with gratitude. If there's any ounce of you that has resistance, do not do it. That's all I can say. When you do do it, make it with total, total, a heart full of gratitude, a total open heart. Um, and the money is to serve people and to help people. And it's that mindset that makes it a blessing in your life, even though it seems like financially it's a blessing in someone else's life. Can giving our time and helping others be enough? I'm a student and earn, earn my own income. Thank you for the lovely question. Yes, absolutely. If you don't have the money and you don't have the money to give, let's just say you're earning whatever and you need to pay your rent and your bills, please do that and keep your financial commitments. And do give your time and also your talents. If there's anything that you do that you're talented in, so for example, I'm a coach and if you think about tithing, there are times where I intentionally and deliberately give coaching away for free. And it's when I have a conversation with someone and they really need it and they cannot afford it. That's a blessing to them. I help that person in that moment and I'm not um, saying this to brag, I'm giving you an example. Whatever you do, whatever your talent is, do something like that as well. So give your talents and time, even to volunteer is giving your time. So it is, it's about giving. Anyone who's ever volunteered knows how good it feels. You don't have to, uh, I don't have to tell you, if you ever volunteer for a good cause, when you've come home that day, you just feel the feeling is what John Maxwell calls significance. So there's a slide coming up um, in front of this, but what John Maxwell says is success is all about me. Significance is all about others. And once you've tasted significance, success will never satisfy you again. So the more you do good in this world in any way, shape or form with your talents, with your money, with your time, it builds you, your self-esteem. You feel good about yourself and definitely um, you're doing something significant. And then lastly, remember that the money is not yours. You are just here to manage that money. Um, it didn't come from you. Absolutely didn't come from you. It came through you. You have been blessed with it. And as it comes to you, let it flow through you and into the world, through your hands, doing something that's of value. And for that, you will not only keep 90%, but you'll also be very blessed. So that's the statement that I use if you want to take a photo of the screen or write that down. When you tithe, focus on this. The money is not mine. It's been given to you. And you are here to manage that money. So imagine if you, I don't know who the most important person on the planet for you is, but imagine that you had to manage that person's money, how well you take care of it if you're entrusted. It's the same thing. All the money that flows to you is really God's money. And you had to manage it and to do good in this world with that money. And how grateful are you that you get to keep 90%. So that's the statement. So here's this quote. It says, God gave me my money. I believe the power to make money is a gift from God to be developed and to use to the best of our ability for the good of mankind. So having been endowed with the gift I possess, I believe it is my duty to make money and still more money and to use the money I make for the good of my fellow man according to the dictates of my conscience. And that's really what it's about. It's to make the world a better place with what you've been blessed with, because you have been blessed. So there's John Maxwell and there's that part of that quote, success is all about me, significance is all about others. And once you've tasted significance, success will never satisfy you again. And that's really the greater purpose of our journey here. It's nice to make money, there's nothing better, it gives you choices, it makes your life better, improves your standard of living, there's no doubt. 
but there's also a greater purpose to being blessed especially the more you give the more you receive and the only way that a person can really believe that principle is to actually practice it and the discipline of tithing will change a person it will change you over time and you will realize how this is my view i'm just going to say it and i don't mean to give any formulas here out for this subject but for me it's a minimum of 10 times and it's often 20 and i found that in my life to be true and um years and years and years ago when i was really young i had the opportunity at some stage to help with some amount of money after the terrible tsunami in thailand and i gave away more money at that time than i'd ever given away before and i felt really good about it at the time and i realized how it actually made me kind of emotional and grateful and then i had this extreme financial windfall after that and it always made me wonder for years if it was related i never knew if it ever was until i met paul martinelli and in that he shared um, the principle of tithing as one of the greatest and most powerful principles in prosperity in your own life okay so let's sum up what is tithing tithing is just really giving a tenth of every single dollar you earn away to a good cause for your development of faith and for you to really just be a blessing in this world why should you tithe to grow to change you to develop faith learn to trust in the source of all supply to develop a conscious awareness of your connection to that source and you will if on the day that you tithe you walk around that whole day feeling a different feeling inside you of that connection and that's the most beautiful thing it also develops an abundance mindset and it's one of the most powerful spiritual practices uh, it is about the law of reciprocity so you might be giving to that particular direction or that cause expecting nothing in return but the law of reciprocity says you will be reciprocated but it might come from a different place but it always comes back it always does and then about the connection to that source gain that awareness don't ask how just trust whoops sorry just trust oops I was, sorry again have faith and that's how it really works and um if you if you say you don't have enough money to give then give of your time and give of your talent and then the seven principles of tithing it was just what we spoke about now of how to tithe and the greatest purpose is more than money it's not a financial practice it's a spiritual practice for you so that's it are there any questions or any comments from anyone otherwise here's this quote which is from rockefeller which is i would i never would have been able to tie the first million dollars i ever made if i had not tied my first salary which was one dollar fifty per week that's why tithing's principle is start from where you are do what you can with what you got from where you are and if you can only afford when you start to maybe tithe at five percent then give something else of yourself away whether that's your time or your talent and just get into the practice of this intentional giving to make the world a better place and in that you will be very very blessed this is just what i say if you bless others with what you have you shall be you shall in turn be truly blessed and we are so blessed really every single one of us sitting here there are m not millions but billions of people in such different circumstances to what we are we are really really so blessed and um, when you do tie that brings that awareness to you in a more conscious way of how blessed you are and the more you walk around in that feeling of, of how blessed you are it's like the law of attraction the more blessed you feel the more happens in your life to give you that feeling of how blessed i am okay so that's it any questions from anyone otherwise we're just going to quickly go through the event and then do a quick meditation any comments any questions anything no let me just see someone wrote here should tithing be linked to something that matters to yourself for example if money doesn't matter to me is it as powerful to give something away that does matter um yes and no so tithing in from the original biblical sense was to do with money for the very purpose that i mentioned it takes discipline you've got to be very conscious to do that it's not something you can do by accident and say oh did, did i tithe i'm not really sure it's not one of those like 
Okay, I have to do this now. So if you not that you can't, you know, like you actually can't go without, then do tithe money and absolutely tithe something else. But the money thing is just that really, really strong change in us. It changes us and it grows us because one, it's something you can measure, which is your money. So you know how much that is and you know how much 10% is. It is a stretch and it does take a step outside your comfort zone. So it is a, it is a spiritual practice. So it is a practice. So yeah, I'd say if you can, if you've got them, if you can do it with money, do it with money. And then, and may that be what you call tithing. And then everything else is over and above that. Um, and give it to something that matters to yourself. So I'd say Tanya, if it is giving away the money, then give it to any cause that's important to you. And use intuition, just close your eyes and go within and just say, I want to be guided to where I'm, I'm most meant to give this money. And I promise you, something will happen almost straight away that will guide you to some cause or you'll just notice something or some email will come through or you'll see a billboard or you'll speak to someone. But right there, it'll be so obvious that this is where you mean to um, tithe. It will be given. Okay, so very different topic to my normal Meaningful Mondays. Um, but all I can say is it's one of the most powerful spiritual practices that really does change a person on every level. And um, we do a mastermind every year on Think and Grow Rich. And at the end, there's another book called The Epilogue to Think and Grow Rich, The Three Missing Chapters. And one of those missing chapters of Think and Grow Rich is tithing. So why it's the epilogue is if you study Think and Grow Rich, there are 13 principles in the book that Napoleon Hill talks about to get rich. No matter who you are, if you apply these certain principles, you'll get rich. And he talks about a secret in the book. But there's a secret to unlocking the secret. And that secret to unlocking the secret are the three missing chapters. And they are love, forgiveness, and tithing. So I'm mentioning that because as a prosperity, wealth, money creating side of our lives. If there's any block in your life that you want to unblock, please trust me that tithing will absolutely remove that block. It will. And so does forgiveness. Forgiveness and money are completely related. And if you don't think they are, they really, really are. Forgiveness, lack of forgiveness blocks money flow. Um, tithing just opens the floodgates. If you practice tithing and you haven't before, you will realize that you become unbelievably blessed in every way, shape or form, just flows in your life and you just have more and more gratitude. It really does humble a person. So I would, I would recommend it. So yep, if you can give the money, make it about the money because money, you, f you can measure it. All right. Have any more questions? Anyone? Yes. No, no. Okay. Then just the events that are coming up. I know some people are here because they follow the silver method. So the September class is sold out. If you would like to do the silver method, the next class for this year is November three to six. It's in Sydney. Um, the end of this year, the mastermind to close off the year is going to be as a man thinketh by James Allen, one of the best personal development books in my opinion ever written. And they say 90% of all personal development books are based off as a man thinketh. Okay. And then if anyone knows anyone in Perth or you are in Perth, Perth is going to this, um, the silver method is coming to Perth for the very first time in my time as a silver trainer, which is now six years. So if you do have family or friends there, please let them know. Those are the dates in January. Um, very happy to go there and, you know, serve there. People have always flown from Perth to Sydney. So. I'm excited to help the people there. There's a quite a big group of silver graduates there, actually. All right, now we're going to do a little guided meditation. Just a question here. Is there any in Sydney? Yes, so is it Suzanne? I just missed the name there. Let me just go back. That class in November is in Sydney, November 3 to 6. That's a silver method class in Sydney. Yeah, all, all the Silver Method classes are in Sydney and always have been. I'm living in Sydney, so I train in Sydney. 
and um, this is just the first one that I'm doing outside of Sydney um, for the first time in Perth. And then there's another one in South Africa next year, in the beginning of the year, if anyone wants to know. All right, so for yourselves, even though it's a meditation, just grab yourselves a pen and paper. Want a pen and paper? It has a pen. You can, you can keep it. Grab yourselves a pen and paper. We're going to ask a few um, just questions at the end, just from your intuition. And you just write down your very first impressions, whatever comes up. You just write the answer down and it will be something of value to you so how this is going to go is i'm just going to guide you through a short um relaxation just listen to the words relax from head to toe i'll tell you what um what to do just listen and relax and then um we're going to imagine a white waterfall of light just pouring over us and making us feel nice and cleared and amazing and then towards the end i'm going to ask you just um three or so questions and when i ask the questions which is about your intention for the month ahead just write down your first impressions don't analyze anything don't question it just write down your first impressions and then close your eyes take a deep breath and go back into meditation and um, when you come out you've written your answers down trust them they come from definitely your higher self or your intuition or whatever name you want to give it. Okay. I'm just going to play some music here. Can you hear this, Jacinta? Is it okay? Is it loud enough? Okay. Okay, so find a comfortable position, close your eyes, take a nice deep breath in, and as you exhale, just allow the tensions in your body to release and float away. Take another slow deep breath in. And as you exhale, consciously relax your body. Feel the tension leaving your scalp. Relax your scalp. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyes and the tissue surrounding your eyes. Relax your cheeks. Relax your whole face. Relax your tongue and jaw. Relax your shoulders, arms, and hands. Take another slow, deep breath in. And as you exhale, relax your chest. Just continue to breathe deeply, slowly, and rhythmically. And relax your abdomen. Relax your thighs. Relax your knees. Relax your calves. Relax your feet all the way down to your toes. Just continue to breathe slowly, deeply and rhythmically and relax.
You're now going to create in your mind an ideal place of relaxation. It can be real or imagined, somewhere that you've been, or maybe somewhere that you'd like to go. And just allow it to be a place where you feel totally relaxed. Just begin to experience this place right now. Now that you've created your ideal place of relaxation, you're going to add a waterfall of white light into the scene. Place it wherever you choose. This waterfall is gentle, allowing you to stand under the cascading white light. The light is a healing energy, a caring energy, your waterfall of light is now created. Walk over to the waterfall and stand under the white cascading light. Allow the white light to swirl around you, encompassing you within its glow. It is clearing the stress, the tension and the clutter of the day and of the week end of the past month, even the past year. Feel this beautiful waterfall of white light clearing the tension and clutter from the lifetime of your energy field, from your atmosphere or your aura. And as this beautiful white light clears your energy field, just notice how much happier you look. Notice the smile on your face. See how all the weights you've been carrying are no longer a burden. And notice how your energy field is expanding out as you are radiating love. This waterfall of light is always available to you whenever you need it. All you need to do is close your eyes, imagine your ideal place of relaxation and immerse yourself in this healing white light. Now take a nice deep breath in, relax even deeper and repeat these beneficial statements to yourself mentally every day, in every way. I am getting better, better and better. Positive thoughts, suggestions and images bring me benefits that I desire. I will always maintain a perfectly healthy body mind and immune system. The following statements are for your better health. Keep in mind from now on, I will be occasionally speaking in your place. Every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every cell, tissue, organ and system of my body is revitalized, restored and renewed, resulting in a perfectly healthy body, mind and immune system. I'm able to function in harmony physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually. Now imagine the white light turns to green you are now immersed in a glowing green light. 
This green light is unconditional love. It surrounds you. It encompasses you. It flows through your entire being. It fills you with love. All those hurts you felt, all those pains you felt, or angry moments, or frustrating moments, just allow this green light, this beautiful unconditional love, to heal all those spaces now. You are an amazing human being. You deserve love. You deserve joy. You deserve health. You deserve abundance. And you deserve peace. It is now time to step out of the waterfall. So step out of the waterfall of light. Your energy field is now clear and clean you feel centered you feel calm you feel focused you are in the flow this flow of universal love and energy just take a moment to enjoy this feeling of connectedness Now that you've reset your body and mind for the month, it's now time to set your intention for the month ahead. So, I'm going to count from 10 to 1. When we reach the count of 1, you will have tuned in to your own inner wisdom, your intuition or your higher self. That part of you that when you tuned in, guides you and intuitively knows what is best for you. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You are now tuned in to your own intuition your higher self, that part of you that intuitively knows what is best for you. And whilst in this calm, relaxed state, I'm going to ask you a question. And just write down your first impressions and then close your eyes and re-enter the meditation. The first question is, what do I need to focus on for the month ahead? And just take a deep breath and relax. The next question is, what steps do I need to take to take me closer to what I want to be, do or have? Just write down your first impressions. What steps do I need to take to take me closer to what I want to be, do or have?
and take a breath and relax. The next question is, what do I need to let go of? What do I need to let go of? Whatever comes to mind, just write it down. And the last question you can ask is, is there anything else? Is there anything else I need to know? Or is there anything else I need to do? Just is there anything else? And write down your first impressions. And just take a nice deep breath, and as you exhale, just relax. Just bring your attention back into your body. I'm going to count from one to three. At the count of three, you'll open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine, in perfect health, feeling better than before. One, two, three. Eyes open, wide awake feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. Fantastic. Thank you so much, everyone. Anybody get some answers? Yeah. All I can say is whatever you wrote down, trust those answers more than you trust your logical mind because your intuition will never ever guide you wrong and if you ask questions in a relaxed state you're most likely tapping into your intuition thanks mike all right everybody thank you so much i'm going to stop the recording and if you have any questions please feel free to ask anything you want